video shows you how to prepare and use a volumetric pipette. A volumetric pipette is calibrated to deliver a fixed amount of liquid with very high precision, and they come in a variety of sizes. This pipette is a 25 milliliter volumetric pipette. And as shown on the upper stem, it's calibrated to deliver 25 milliliters of a liquid. The precision, as indicated by the manufacturer, is plus or minus 0.03 milliliters. Now, for our purposes, this means that the precision is two decimal places. The manufacturer calibrates the pipette at a temperature of 20 degrees. So this means that we can transfer a volume of 25.00 milliliters of liquid with this pipette, provided that it is used properly. Now, before the pipette is used to make a precise transfer of liquid, it must first be cleaned. The tip of the pipette is immersed in some hot detergent solution and the liquid is pulled up into the pipette by using a pipette filler until the bulb of the pipette is about half full. The pipette filler is removed and an index finger is placed on the upper end of the pipette to prevent the liquid from running out. The pipette is shaken several times and the detergent solution is discarded. The procedure is repeated once or twice. The pipette is then rinsed two to three times with tap water until the detergent is completely flushed away. Finally, the pipette is rinsed several times with distilled water. The inside of the pipette is checked to make sure that it drains freely and that there are no droplets of water sticking to the inside surface. And this indicates that the pipette is perfectly clean. We're going to transfer 25.00 milliliters of this standard solution to an Erlenmeyer flask. But first, we rinse the pipette once or twice with the solution so as to remove any residual water from the previous cleaning. The pipette is approximately half filled with the solution. The pipette filler is removed and an index finger placed on the top of the pipette. And the pipette is then tilted and rotated to allow the solution to coat the inside surface to about two to three centimeters above the calibration mark. And then discard the solution into a waste beaker. This is repeated once or twice. So the pipette has now been cleaned and rinsed with the solution to be transferred. And for convenience sake, it can be placed in a vertical position using a burette clamp. The tip of the pipette is immersed in the solution to be transferred. And using a pipette filler, the solution is sucked into the pipette until the meniscus is two to three centimeters above the calibration mark. The pipette is removed from the solution and the tip is dried with a tissue. Holding the tip of the pipette against the inside surface of the beaker, the liquid is allowed to slowly run out of the pipette until the meniscus is resting on the calibration mark. And be sure to keep your eye level with the meniscus when doing this. The receiving vessel, in this case an Erlenmeyer flask, is then placed under the pipette and the pipette is allowed to drain. Don't allow the pipette to touch the glass or to be immersed in a liquid during the draining process. The pipette should be allowed to drain its contents by gravity alone. And when the pipette is finally drained, touch the tip quickly against the inside of the receiving vessel to dislodge any droplet hanging from the tip. The transfer is complete and we can be sure that 25.00 milliliters of the liquid have been transferred to the receiving vessel. If we look closely at the tip of the pipette following the transfer, some liquid can be seen. Do not be tempted to blow this into the receiving vessel. Remember that the pipette has been calibrated by the manufacturer to deliver the precise amount, 25.00 milliliters in this case, and it's been calibrated to not include the small amount of liquid left in the tip, only when it has been used in exactly the way described. This concludes this short video on the use of the volumetric pipette. 
Remember that what we have shown you here provides basic practical information and your instructor may want to slightly modify some of the procedures shown, depending upon the experiment you may be doing at the time. For more videos on lab techniques for the chemistry lab, check out our YouTube channel at Capilano U Chem Lab or visit our website at capuchem.ca slash labs. And thank you for watching.